I am joined today by Professor Sharon Goldberg. Sharon is a colleague here at Boston University at our Department of Computer Science. And I'm going to ask her what she thinks the future of cybersecurity might look like in a post-COVID world. Really what COVID has done has accelerated our move online. Um, you know, we're all now using computers for things we never did before. There are people now using computers in ways that they never did before. So just to, it's a very simple example. My mother had never heard of Zoom before the pandemic. Um, and these days she's on, you know, multiple times a week. She's got coffee with her girlfriends. She's got, you know, meeting with us. And, and, and all of these things are happening online because they can't happen in person. Zoom itself actually got a massive amount of attention. I'm talking about in March and April when we were first at home. I remember there was a huge amount of chatter in the cybersecurity world on the cybersecurity of Zoom. Um, prior to the pandemic, Zoom was business communication software. No one really cared about it. Um, outside of like a small, you know, community that was using it, um, but it wasn't being used broadly. And then all of a sudden, you know, everyone's on Zoom, it becomes a verb, it's just part of like the, the general way we communicate. And so what was found by the, this research um, was that the, the encryption that they were using um, was done in ECB mode, electronic code, bo code book mode. Um, and in my class, you know, one of the first things we teach about encryption is don't use ECB mode. And the reason for this is because ECB mode doesn't do a good job of, of hiding patterns. And so you can really understand what's going on in the underlying picture. And so when people saw, you know, ECB mode um, is being used by Zoom, there was this uproar. And very quickly, you saw uh, Zoom rushing in to come up with a better encryption algorithm, releasing a new encryption algorithm. Then there was a further uproar when it was found that they had only released that algorithm to their business customers and they were putting everyone else still on ECB mode. Um, and, and so more uproar and sort of more pressure on them to increase cybersecurity when this was sort of like this niche obscure topic, like who cares about the cybersecurity of like business video software before. And it is not just all of us using so much more of these technologies. It's also governments. It's also leaders. You know, I think one thing that COVID has done is it's brought technology into spaces where it never was before. It's part of our, you know, conversation with our parents. It's part of our conversation with our grandparents. It's part of coffee with friends. It's part of, you know, like even religious services, everything that we do. But it's also like very, very important people are communicating this way now in ways that they didn't before. So if you remember, again, I'm, I'm again transporting myself to like the good old days of early virus time in March uh, when Boris Johnson um, got sick right around that same time the, the, in, in the UK, um, there was this picture of Boris Johnson's cabinet having a meeting over Zoom. So you see the UK government communicating over Zoom. And so all of these concerns that, that are sort of broadly applicable just to regular people, they also apply to, you know, the people who make the rules, right? Um, and, and so I think it, 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 it further sort of drives home the importance of, um, of cybersecurity just in our daily lives. Do you think this moment has had or will have an impact on regulation, on policy? The regulatory environment around cybersecurity, um, you know, in this country is, is kind of strange. So having, had a, having worked in the fintech industry, I can tell you that there is an industry that's highly regulated. Um, anything you do, any product you launch, anything you do, you better have every I dotted and T crossed. But if you look at data or you look at personal data, it's just not as highly regulated. And this, I think, just comes from the fact that, that data is like a new concept in, in law and in government. And we haven't really put a lot of thought in, in regulation there. And so, I mean, my personal opinion is that there are spaces that are overregulated and there are spaces that are underregulated and things are really off balance um, today. And so I think, you know, I think one of the things that COVID accelerates is, um, people's awareness of their data in different places. And I, I really do wonder if this is going to lead to, you know, more careful regulation. Because we are using these technologies so much and so often, do you think we've become more aware about the importance of cybersecurity? I don't think people are becoming more aware. I, I, I don't think that's the way the tide is going, unfortunately. I mean, when I, um, and that's, that, that pains me to say, um, I think that there is a lot of awareness in the technical community of what's happening and the importance of cybersecurity for these types of technologies. But I don't know that the general public um, 
understands this or as, is as interested, right? So, um, you know, if you were to ask the average person on the street, like, what do you, how do you feel about the government using Zoom to make, you know, cabinet level decisions? I don't think the average person would worry. But I think the challenge with security is that um, secure, cybersecurity is really, we're protecting against unusual and very bad events. We're protecting against like an adversary who's specifically out to get you um, and harm you. And often, you know, and, and taking actions to do that. So these aren't things that happen that often, but when they do happen, um, they're really bad.